Here we go with the Leo Zagami show. Leo and Christy are back at it uh, for a uh, weekly rundown of uh, geopolitical analysis, uh, current news, and what not. Uh, here we are. <laughs> The Leo Zagami Show! Let's hear it from the official voice. And now, live from Palm Springs, California, your host, Leo Zagami. Chris Zagami, yes. So, how are you? How have you been? How have you been? Huh? <laughs> you got busy here today? <laughs> okay, so uh, I want to welcome those who have tuned in. Please share, share, multiply. Only 10 people at the moment. What is this? Oh, nice. Sweating over here, Rio. <laughs> oh, well, it's a extremely hot day as usual. What's the temperature out there? I don't know. Uh, it's like really hot. Very hot. Hmm. They were talking about Phoenix being the hottest city in the US, but that's not really the truth because Palm Springs is even hot. <laughs> okay, first of all, uh, we have uh, we have a lot of news here. We have a lot of news. We have, we have a table filled with news. The topic of the day, as you have noticed, is Joe Biden destroying America. Oh, okay. Got it. Like a word. <laughs> okay, I see a few more people have tuned in. Uh, I guess uh, we now even have a Roku channel uh, of our own. I don't know how that's possible, but it is possible. <laughs> Thanks to Grandpa Tone. Thanks to Grandpa Tone. <laughs> Uh, we are, uh, of course, uh, uh, supported by you, thanks to the purchase of our books. Uh, I remind you, Queen Christy, here she is with her two books, Confessions of an Illuminati Princess, because when she was young, she was a princess, and now she's still young, but she's become a queen. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so, uh, volume 6.66, this is a very important book to understand the reality of technology and demonology, really. Eh? And, of course, my latest book, volume 7, available also in hardcover for the first time you can purchase a Leo Zagami book and put it, uh, uh, clearly exhibit it in your library because it's a fantastic book. Collectible. Collectible. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> and then we have volume four, volume five. And of course, we would like to thank those people who have contributed to uh, this show. Uh, you know who you are. In reality, not many people <laughs> contribute <laughs> to, to this show. So I wanted to, uh, in some way, thank them publicly some way thank them publicly so we have uh cettina filippone peppina ciro she's Pina, she's so great she's so great uh, really she makes it possible for us uh, to uh, offer you this show like other people like bruce kodesh uh shelly annette raymond cam richard kelly and ellen sukach these are the people who have made possible uh, the Leo Zagami show in the last couple of weeks. Please support the Leo Zagami show. You can do it thanks to uh, GoFundMe, which, uh, by the way, you can use with PayPal. Eh? Um, I mean, we don't have PayPal because, as you know, we have been banned from it. We reattempt once again to go on. <laughs> they don't want us on PayPal. They, don't want us. they banned us. But we have... Uh, uh, also fondly and for those who live uh, uh, those uh, people who live in the United States or in Great Britain then you can also use Cash App. Cash App it's very easy you can download the app and it's it literally takes two minutes to set it up and it's another way you can uh, easily uh, donate but uh, uh, I leave it to you guys 
we definitely need uh, your support to carry on uh, and uh, at the same time i'm also uh, moving along with the production of my new book volume eight which is gonna be uh, probably coming out in september and uh, we are very much looking forward to it but in the meantime here we are go fund me huh the Leo Zagami show, uh, go fund me. Eh? If you want to support us, this is the way, best way possible. Go fund me, fund, cash up. Okay, okay. We have uh, talked about you, our sponsors, and it's now time to start with the news. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, this day, this day now, this day now, this Disney is evil. This day, Disney is woke. Uh, okay, so I used to like Disney. yeah, 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 yeah. I guess that those were the days. Those were the days. When Bef you didn't know better. When you didn't know better, we have uh, broke this news for the English-speaking world, guys. And uh, uh, I think we are actually the first people to talk about it, uh, just like Disney, the Vatican also has embraced uh, uh, their woke nature. Well, I guess the Vatican has, has in their DNA 80% of uh, uh, priests that are homosexual. Uh, and we have just uh, uh, published an article breaking this news about, uh, shocking news, uh, shocking news about uh, basically uh, a new logo for the Jubilee of 2025, a Jubilee uh, that looks uh, very rainbowish. And uh, of course, uh, you're going to see soon who, who is the author of this new logo. No surprise there is a flaming queer, but we don't have anything against gay people as long as they uh, are honest about it. In the Vatican, uh, they are not. Um, here we have Monsignor Fisichella, who is presenting the logo. Now, this logo, let's, let's talk about this logo. It's like a little train. Um, <laughs> it has created quite a stare because uh, uh, some people have said peregrinantes in sperm, in sperma, instead of sperm, sperm. Uh, What's sperm mean? Uh, well, um, I know what sperma means. <laughs> so, pe 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 pilgrims in the in the sperm. <laughs> what's sperm? Sperm, I don't know in Latin, sincerely. I have to uh, translate it. Um, uh, we, we, if you want, we can translate it now. Uh, okay, so we have uh, um, this, uh, this important jubilee year, which, of course, uh, is taking place in 2025 in a world that probably is going to be in even more turmoil than we are already now. Uh, but who made this logo and who accepted? Of course, the Pope was the one who accepted this logo. But who made this logo? Because Maria Di Nolfi, who is a gentleman, an Italian journalist, politician, famous in Italy for his conservative uh, uh, Catholic beliefs, immediately said, but damn it, uh, is it the Jubilee or a gay pride? Did they really have to choose the rainbow in the logo? Anyway, mind you, I'm the blue one, the last on the train. He likes to be the last. I guess that everybody that doesn't like to be taken anally by the Vatican likes to be last in the train. Um, in any case, uh, he was heavily criticized. So he replied by posting the images of the author of this logo, Giacomo Trevisani. What is wrong with the Catholic? Who is a massage therapist? Now, could the Pope choose somebody a little bit less flaming? I mean, it's kind of evident here that, uh, I mean, we don't have anything against, but at this point, the Vatican should be quite honest. No? I mean, this is the author of the new logo for the Vatican Jubilee taking place in 2025. I mean, it's, uh, what do you think about that, Christine? I huh? think that they could have chosen a better artist. Uh, it's, uh, they don't really think about... I mean, uh, first of all, a Jubilee is a holy year of grace and pilgrimage in the Catholic Church. The majority is huh? not... Anyway, whatever. We know. 
All of us know. Um, the Catholic Church is the, the Satanic Church. I, I would like to uh, to go into my uh, translator here, so I can translate you very quickly from Latin. What well, it means, means that it no, means. no, no, it means uh, pilgrims in hope. Spam means hope. Oh, but if you put sperma, then is okay. So it's a very, it's a really uh, okay. Let, let me show you guys because this is very interesting, and we're gonna do it in real time for you. Um, check this out. Check this out. I went on the translator and it's really clear here. Okay, so of course I translated in, in, in Italian, we can translate it also in English. Pellegrims, uh, uh, so let's put it in English so it makes it very clear. Of course my computer here talks Italian, just like uh, at times myself. So um, Pilgrims in Hope, that's the official translation. But if you simply put an R and an A, that's what you get. Pilgrim is in the sperm? Yeah. That's just... Okay, so, so you understand, the Vatican at the moment has it like this. But then, it's Pilgrim's in Hope. You add an R and an A, and it becomes Pilgrim's in, in Sperm, the translation. And of course, when you have uh, somebody who is uh, so flaming, uh, like uh, the guy who was chosen by Pope Francis, this gentleman here, Giacomo Trevisani, massage therapist, um, it's pretty evident that the Vatican is uh, going down the rabbit hole of the LGBTQ, but it's, an, it's even more evident with Elon Musk, who just reach the Pope with his four, four or five children, why there is a problem with the fifth one. And what is the problem is that basically, uh, in the meantime, Elon Musk met the Pope and broke his Twitter silence to share a photo of himself and his kids uh, with the pontiff uh, a week after his son Xiaver legally changed gender from male to female, leaving his last name to distance it's, uh, himself, herself, from his father calling himself herself i don't know how you want to do it Divian jenna wilson so uh now elon musk is the father of a proud transgender it seems like vivian i said is getting ready for the 2025 uh, jubilee as well as maybe they could call walt disney to sponsor the event because like i said they're so woke at walt disney so the what was the problem for Elon Musk instead? Elon Musk didn't see a problem there. His problem was that he wore the wrong kind of suit. He actually complained on Twitter that the suit was looking pretty dreadful. So let's go and check the suit of Elon Musk just to have a look at this gentleman here that we often talk about. And see how stylish he is. I mean, he is in Italy. He will get. He has all the money of the world. What's wrong with his suit? Um, I I think that he could have. Well, he's so rich. Why doesn't he have a tailored suit? Yeah, I mean, why doesn't he have a tailored suit? Uh, couldn't. Is he very short? No. That suit's way <laughs> too big on him. Yeah, but how how big is he? I mean, oh, he must he, be he, very tall. Look at the Pope. Look at Popey. But I mean, uh, Elon Musk really w w was uh, was pretty upset about uh, his um, his suit. Not about his son declaring himself uh, uh, changing uh, gender and becoming a woman, but rather instead going after his suit. Uh, I think uh, I have the, the I'm gonna find the Elon Musk tweet a second here. So Elon Musk seems to have uh, uh, more serious problems. Here you have uh, all kinds of people on, on, on uh, let me see, huh? I never go on Twitter. Uh. Okay, let's see. Okay, now I'm gonna show it to our gentle friends. 
Uh, here we have, uh, let me see if, honor to meet the Pope. This, of course, was his tweet. But then he, he complained about the suit. Where is it that the post about uh, complaining about the suit? He also, then it's a site of great remembrance. I mean, before going to the Pope, he went to Eyes Wide Shut party. <laughs> huh? I guess so. What? Before going to the Pope, Elon Musk seemed to have been a little bit more into some kind of a, huh? Whoa. <laughs> then it's a site of great remembrance. What, what is he remembering? Watch me past. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> so the, 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 that is Elon Musk. Uh, definitely, it's the most weird guy. Like I said, I don't go much on Twitter, but uh, um, I know that he also posted about uh, his suit, but I can't seem to find it. Maybe he, he posted it on a follow up to this tweet. Maybe. Mm -hmm. The one. Uh, with his uh, with his uh, sons, okay, okay. So remember, uh, hmm. okay. So uh, Elon Musk uh, is becoming, uh, I guess, a proud supporter as a father of the 2025 uh, naturally LGBTQ friendly jubilee of the Vatican. Uh, he might put himself. Uh, in the back of the train, just like Adinolfi. Okay, so uh, please share this video. We are the only ones on the internet who break such news for you. I mean, uh, the only one. There's nobody that brings you the news like Leo Zagami and Christy here on a weekly basis. We want to thank, once again, though, the only people that seem to care. Those people are Cetina <laughs> Filippone, Peppina Cero, is number one is great and as well as bruce kodish shelly annett raymond cam richard kelly and sukatre these are basically the only six people that have in the, the last two weeks. in the last two weeks guys i leave it to you <laughs> don't be stingy uh, otherwise uh, and, and 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 of course uh, we are offering you at the moment uh, only once a week show because uh, with the, the cost of electricity, the heat here, guys, the heat, the Palm Springs. Let's, let's see how hot this is it's up today in Palm Springs. I, I just, just, just for curiosity, I'm curious to see how hot is the uh, temperature in Palm Springs today. Well, it's still relatively modest compared to other days. We are, it's 96, 96, 96. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Eh? For those who, of course, are European and would but like it's to gonna know. Get it'll, it's go get, it'll get hotter. I would suggest for anybody who has intention to move to Palm Springs to maybe uh, have a period of trial here, uh, uh, renting a place and maybe getting used to it. We did that. and we, in the end, decided to move here. Mm -hmm. So we had a period of trial, because it is a shock, uh, of course, to... Um, no? It's still a shock. It's still a shock, you think? You can't eh? go outside. You can't go outside, yes. It's kind of like... For those who don't know uh, how much is that in Celsius, because in Europe you talk about Celsius, this is the temperature. Let me show you. Ladies and gentlemen, 96 is 35.55556 Celsius. And it's still 10.25 in the morning. By midday, it's going to probably right to 100. By 3 o'clock, it might touch 105. No, I get to 110. I guess 110. Okay. <sighs> Sometimes more. So when I was watching today an article about uh, on Yahoo about Phoenix being the hottest city and people couldn't take it anymore and blah, 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 I was kind of like, these people are wimps. Well, 
what's the degrees in? Okay, let's are go. they 120? No, are but this they have no, they have actually. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you because I would like to show you. Um, they call uh, Phoenix the hottest city in America. So let's go and check. Huh? Here we are. Phoenix, the hottest city in America. Sur uh, can, can Phoenix, the hottest city in America, survive climate change? Whoa. It's already in Kansas, please. Uh, uh, on the, the downtown streets in America, the hottest city, the temperature has hit 109 degrees Fahrenheit. It is one o'clock in the afternoon. Well, it's just just like Palm Springs. I mean, we can touch even uh, even 115 uh, if it gets uh, really hot. Uh, the other day it was uh, almost 120 at one point. I don't know how. But. Last year, what do we get? Well, like 125. Uh, we were like the second hottest place in the world after Death Valley. But here, uh, basically, the Democrats uh, are kind of. Uh, interested in pushing all their bullshit uh, and so a democrat was appointed to her first ma mayor term in nine, it was in 19 at the age of 37 after her predecessor was elected to congress uh, was raised uh, like many in her generation she suffers from asthma Ooh, a condition made worse by the air pollution causing climate change oh mm -hmm. and which great uh, so it's all about climate change and of course the libertad Mayor, it's, it's 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 just propaganda in the end. Now, in Phoenix, where summer can feel a bit like living through a science experiment of a dystopian dare, the the, the, the average summertime has risen by three point eight degrees since nineteen seventy. The city now averages a hundred and eleven annual days of triple digit heat. I wonder how how many triple digit heats we have here. Uh, Kerry, our friend Kerry is in uh, Phoenix. Kerry, uh, can you tell us uh, how is the situation at the moment? Uh, he actually said Palm Springs is hot. But, but, but is it true, Kerry, that the Democrats are kind of like, they like to, to, to feel miserable about their heat? Why don't they say how hot is in Palm Springs? That is full of, it's, it's been in the hands of the Democrats for a lifetime now. Unfortunately, it's, uh, it's it's overcast. It's overcast. Uh, they are exaggerating a bit. You know, this uh, this article is kind of dramatic. Uh, it seems like it's it's like they are really depicting a, a, an apocalyptic scenario. Mm -hmm. They like to do that. They like to do that. And in the meantime, America, it's of course feeding the pressure. But we have to sacrifice ourselves for the liberal new world order. The liberal world order. Uh, that is uh, what uh, the Joe Biden administration is asking us to do. And if you ask Biden if he has any plans on saving us uh, from uh, these uh, uh, high cost uh, prices at the pump, well, uh, this is what he says. Joe Biden. And how long is it expect, uh, fair to expect American drivers to continue to pay a premium because of this war? Let me hear this, the, the second part of the question was, would it bring down the price? How, will it bring down prices? And, and the war has pushed prices up. They could go as high as $200 a barrel, some analysts think. How, how long is it fair to expect American drivers and drivers around the world to pay that premium for this war? As long as it takes. So Russia cannot, in fact, defeat Ukraine and move beyond Ukraine. Oh, as long as it takes, as long as it takes, as long as it takes. Well, let's see what a great Hollywood actor has said about Joe Biden and his policies. A great actor which I hold in high esteem, John Boy. Unfortunately, like many people, including my friend uh, uh, Rosan Barr, uh, who has daughters who are libtards, John Boyd has a daughter who is a libtard. But uh, this is what he said from his Twitter account. Please listen to him. My dear friends, we're all saddened by so much turmoil that has been brought upon this life we live. Can this darkness be lifted? Can we all share joy once again and see eye to eye? We have a troubled nation with much horror from these criminals that are ruining lives. We must stop this now. We must bring back our nation's safety. 
our police force must act on righteousness and guard our neighborhoods, our businesses, our children, our elderly, our veterans, and our handicapped. We must protect this nation and bring back safety. We're all feeling very unsafe. We're all angry. And let's remember why. It starts with the seat of the President of the United States. He has wronged this nation's glory. He has taken down our morals, our true gift of the land of the free. He must be impeached. We cannot wait another second having him dictate our path. Let us work together, get him out, and make this country what she stands for, greatness, the land of opportunity, the land of the greatest soil our forefathers fought for. Don't let this President Biden tear down every inch that was sacrificed with blood, sweat, and tears for his dictation of lies. I urge all to see truths. I urge all to make a difference for our children's future, our future, because my fellow Americans, this land is being broken down. But we as a nation of God's truths shall build her up once again and bring her to her feet with glory. God bless America. And God bless America for this 4th of July. Happy 4th of July, everybody. Uh, this is uh, 4th of July weekend uh, here in the U.S. As you know, a great festivity because in 1776, we stuck our middle finger up to the that British crown and those idiots in Europe. And since then, we never walked back on our co great constitution. Unfortunately, those elitarians who we were fighting in 1776 are now striking back. They are, of course, doing it because democracy, but uh, this is a constitutional republic, first of all. It's a very fragile thing, uh, thing when you have people who are very easy to corrupt, who go to Washington, D.C. So please think about it. We had the best president in the last few years because he's a billionaire and he's not corruptible. When you have a guy like Barack Obama, you give him $70 million to write a hypothetical book or a Netflix series, and you buy him out, he is basically a tool. The same can be said for all the politicians, both Republican and Democrat, who go to Washington, D.C. Unfortunately, this is the problem. The aristocracy, the royal, they were people who owned the land. They owned everything, including the people. They were not corruptible. The republic on which we stand, unfortunately, is based on principles that are great, but they're also very weak when we have China. China is actually even buying land in North Dakota. We heard in the last few days Bill Gates buying more land. He's the biggest farmer at the moment in the United States. But now China, yes, China is buying land and it's buying it near a military base where they experiment military drones. And America is not doing anything to stop all this because America thinks about other things like the government. No, if we think about the, the, the color of the skin, uh, what sex are you, if we have to open the bathrooms to everybody or to just, this is so much rubbish. I mean, uh, it's becoming ridiculous. But the problem, I repeat, is why does America accept all this? It's, it's, it's just like, I, I just can't get yeah. uh, uh, over it. You know, well, part of it doesn't. Did you but listen to John White? We don't accept it. We are. I'm sorry to to contest what you're saying, but uh, I have now a hundred years old vet that actually crying, saying this is not the country I fought for. So what? This is a hundred years old vet. This is what I'm talking about. I don't know. I've I've lived a good life. I mean, I've had. Uh, a lot, a lot of happiness, happiness, smiling, telling everybody that everything was beautiful every day. If I went into my church and didn't say everything was beautiful, they'd think I was sick. And I, 
and I'm not that way. I mean, I'm a, uh, I, I sincerely believe in this old world that everything is beautiful. I mean, if I see, if I wake up in the morning and see these plants out here and, they, and all those flowers that are in there and the green grass on the, on the ground, that's beautiful. And people don't realize what they have. They bitch about it. And then nowadays, I am so upset that the things we did and the things we fought for and the boys that died for it, it's all gone down the drain. Our country's gone to hell in a handbasket. We haven't got the country we had when I was raised. Not at all. Nobody will have the fun I had. Nobody will have the opportunity I had. It's just not the same. That's not what I was. That's not what they died for. I just, it's just, just not it. Darling, I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah. I'll be all right. It just takes me time to get over it. I just, I, I, why, why me see, sitting here like this? See, all this going on. It, it just, Emily, it's just, just not, it's just not the same. It, that isn't what we fought for. Oh well. I should be worried about it, I guess. I'm a hundred years old, they say. A hundred years old, telling us the truth about the disunited state of America. Oh, it's really sad. So, I hope I now you understand what I'm talking here about. I mean, uh, my analysis is in Pietus because there is uh, no pity in front of all the idiots that have been elected over and over again, sent to Washington to ruin our country. Well, I didn't vote for them. It's uh, very clear here that we need the people that are sincerely motivated. And we hope, of course, that Donald J. Trump can be trusted uh, to make a true positive change in 2024, as well as his candidates that are leading the GOP in the midterms. But can we? Can we? Because we can't accept compromises any longer. We can't accept compromises. We can't accept half-truths. We need to say the United States of America, because uh, it's uh, becoming a disunited country. I mean, today, if you go on uh, on Drudge, for example, you can notice something that uh, might uh, make us understand the state of the United States of America today. An image that says a lot of words more than a lot of words, more than a thousand words. Sorry, at times my English is not at the level, but I try my best. Your English is good. Uh, as you can see, is United States of America, what I've been saying for a long time now. We are risking a lot because the red-blue divide deepens more and more every day. It's constant lies from the media that brainwash the new generations that go to these universities where they are teach rubbish by a bunch of libtards. Libtards are responsible for the demise of this country and for the future fall of this country. In the case of a civil war, we will be fighting like, like happened during the civil war. We will be fighting against people who are Americans. But who think differently, who have made choices that are becoming more and more difficult, if not impossible, to accept. And so, 
to see this uh, superficiality in the air on the 4th of July, people that still talk about gas prices. Gas prices is a big problem, of course, as the prices in the shops, as the inflation that is growing. But the problem here is that these people are deliberately bankrupting the country and they're pushing their idiotic policies, stating openly that we need to sacrifice ourselves because we have to save the liberal world order. Now, that is not really something we care about, the liberal world order. What, what is this liberal world order all about? What is this liberal world order all about? It's just, at times, for me, it's really hard to, to understand how people can be really fooled by the media and their politicians. And then we have a caravan of 4,000 people heading towards America. In the, they just left the south border of Mexico. And they're waiting uh, to move uh, to the north. Check out what is happening. I mean, these people are ready to enrich the democratic vote. At least that's what they hope. seems like a mess the liberal world order is a mess the liberal world order is made out of people who prefer to turn the other way when the real problems are arising in society the liberal world order is made out of people who don't really know what is happening but believe in cnn uh, msnbc nbc the liberal world order is made out of those people who think it's great to welcome all the migrants of the world, even from countries like Islam, and then they find themselves like in Norway with an Islamic uh, person shooting uh, in a gay bar and killing people. So then you have these short circuits, you know, where, you know, welcome, welcome, we love everybody. But then after they, they realize that even their own rubbish is not really feasible. We need to reclaim America. I explained this in my latest book. The uh, great reject is a way at least uh, to position ourselves 
to prepare ourselves. Before this liberal New World Order is going to take over every single city in the United States. I made a great interview uh, yesterday. I will be rebroadcasting it uh, um, in the next uh, 24 hours. Uh, it's an interview I made with this gentleman, Michael Jacko, who is a former Navy SEAL CA operative. I uh, advise uh, all of you to uh, watch this uh, great interview that I will be also uh, uploading in uh, uh, in the next few hours here on my channel because I think there is some great content and some great things that have been said pray that we can stay united that's my main prayer for this 4th of July oh beautiful beautiful and that's that's a great prayer to have thank you Leo and yeah uh, I'll have all your info uh, down in the description that's the prayer the prayer that we need to stay united. The Leo Zagami show has been censored over and over again. We need your support. Uh, we have been really wiped off the map here. Uh, of course, uh, we tried to build uh, a presence on other platforms, but it's really a uh, time-consuming effort, and we don't have that kind of uh, uh, teamwork. Uh, I mean, we don't have a team. We are just me and Christy. Uh, we are a team. We are a team. But, uh, and of course, uh, you guys who are supporting us with your donations, we're all we all. Show up every yes, week. yes, 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 yes. Um, but we need, uh, of course, uh, to uh, continue and we need to uh, make uh, possible uh, that this uh, broadcast reaches uh, the widest amount of people possible now that's why we are now also on roku we have a channel there that was set up by our friend uh, uh, grandpa tone um, and so i advise you also to download that channel so there, there will be a, probably they will be uploading this uh, show soon i don't think they can Unfortunately, broadcast live. I know, I know something. Okay, then. I know where all the Canadians came from. Oh, there's a lot of Canadians that call <laughs> Grandpa Tone. They might be Canadian. <laughs> I think Grandpa Tone is Canadian. <laughs> okay. Um, do you know that uh, in that libtarded country of Australia, that hellhole, in which during the pandemic, even the Chinese said that the, the they were being even more strict than the, the Chinese. Australia is my nightmare because it's not really, it's a continent, but it's actually an island. It's an island, it's a, it's a few, few just, but you can't leave it. You are under the control of this evil. Everyone? I mean, you can't, I mean, you can't leave it. You can, but you know how, how strict they have been during the pandemic. Uh, it was impossible to leave. Now maybe they can. I would suggest so Australia. You can leave. Leave, leave because uh, look <laughs> at your American living there. <laughs> look at, at uh, these idiots marching against the decision of the Supreme Court in America. What's their business? I mean, what, what, what's their problem? Is their problem? I mean, these are idiots. Why don't you go and screw a kangaroo? Uh, I mean, it's, 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 it's these idiots from Australia. Uh, what's their business uh, with what we do here in America? If the Supreme Court has made a decision in America, is it their business in Canada, in Canada or in Australia or in New Zealand? These places are property of the British crown. They are made out of loyal subjects to a queen 
and a crown that is corrupted because the only monarchies, like I explained in my book, that were left alive are the ones who, who, who basically decided to obey to the Illuminati. That's it. They are slaves. These people are slaves. Watch them. And guys, this is not happening in the United States of America. It's not happening in California. It's not happening uh, in New York. It's happening in Australia. So, what do you think of that, I mean, of these uh, Australians uh, who have no business in American politics uh, uh, protesting like this against uh, the decision of the There's Supreme Court? There's lots of Court. countries that are doing that. I mean, it's... Okay, to everybody, I suggest you purchase this book because this book has got uh, actually people like uh, Michael Jacob very excited. He, he was actually uh, talking about it yesterday at the beginning of the show. And, and this makes you understand that people who have been professionals also in the intelligence field have really understood uh, the importance of my work. Maybe the average folk doesn't. But uh, the, the people like him who have a past uh, in the military intelligence, well, they seem to understand it a little bit better than others. What do you think of that, Christy? I think that your readers are really smart. I see it in the chat and mm -hmm. I see it. I see it, you know. So your readers are smart and you have to be smart to read your books and understand them. Mm -hmm. That's what I say. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not uh, surprised that he's um, a, a, a he was a Navy SEAL. I want to uh, replay what he said at the beginning of the show about my book. Hello, everyone. It's Michael Jacob with Unleashing Intuition Secrets. And I'm joined today by best-selling author Leo Zagami. We're going to talk about his latest book, and in, in my opinion, his masterpiece in the Confessions of Illuminati series, uh, book number seven. Leo, thanks for joining us. It's always a pleasure uh, when I get the, your reviews of my books, I'm encouraged. So thank you so much <laughs> and uh, for reading it and uh, for bringing me back to your show. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I have been reading your book and it's, it abso it's absolutely amazing. We were talking before the show and I was uh, telling you that, you know, your books are amazing because I have pretty much, you know, all of your books, so they're right here with me. Uh, they're, they're the type of books that you can open anywhere and go, oh, my God, that's amazing. That's so insightful. Uh, and, you know, I was talking about how I was in the Navy SEAL teams at, at really high levels, at the highest level in the SEAL team, SEAL team 6, and then uh, the CIA, working in the CIA. So I saw a lot of stuff. Uh, I have some really good insight. But when I read your books, I'm like, how does he know all this? But, you know, you were among the Illuminati and they're the ones that basically are controlling the world. So you're ahead of the ball game with your information. So I, I thank you for your work and uh, uh, what you're sharing. So uh, after nice. Frank, uh, really, my it was a great <laughs> public display of appreciation for volume seven of my confessions. As you can see, there is people who uh, really uh, have... Uh, uh, appreciate this book and so you should do you should too because it's also a way for me and Christy to encourage us to uh, continue also this uh, weekly show that we would like at the end of the summer to uh, start again on a more regular basis uh, 
after, of course, uh, we produce volume eight, uh, which is coming together very well. And uh, it's uh, going to be an, uh, The donations huh? that we get, it's really hard to do it in this summer anyway. Yes, despite yes. Despite the fact that you're writing this book right now. Yes, so. yes. No, I mean, uh, you have to understand that here, uh, it's like uh, when you start uh, uh, putting the lights on, uh, the studio lights. Uh, Our electric bill is crazy. It goes to four five hundred dollars. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, and I don't even want to see it when it's in July. Uh, you know, so it, it's, it's like... <laughs> We are in July. So, I guys, uh, I hope you, uh, you are, of course, understanding of the fact that we have to cut a little bit on the transmission during the summer. But that's so many, though, but, uh, in the spring. Yes, 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 yes. But also, uh, there is more coming up. But don't worry, after the summer, we're probably going to uh, go back at it, especially because we're going to be also proposing another chapter of my confessions, which is very important because it's dedicated to uh, the downfall of Hollywood, to what is happening uh, behind the scenes, how they have been manipulating us uh, for so long in the music and in the cinema business. Uh, so, of course, we will be talking about that when we get to it. Okay, so uh, there is more news, more news here from the Leo Zagami show. Welcome, everybody. Uh, three minutes to uh, 11 o'clock here in Palm Springs, California. Uh, welcome to the show, wherever you are around the world. Uh, we have, uh, uh, of course, uh, also um, an unheard of LGBTQ uh, Islamic mosque. Guys. What? Uh, Islam uh, has never really appreciated very much uh, the uh, uh, homosexual gay community. They have done it though in Berlin. In Berlin, uh, it's uh, something that is pretty shocking. Uh, I'm sure that uh, in other Muslim country, in Muslim countries, because of course Germany is not a Muslim country, but uh, it's, it's it has a growing Islamic community. And this is what they did in one of their mosques in Berlin. Now it's not uh, it's not like uh, there is never been any uh, homosexuals uh, in Islam. I mean, uh, if you go to countries like Morocco, it's it's pretty widespread the culture of homosexuality. And this is the mosque, though, in Berlin. Watch them all. Very happy. So this is uh, basically the first uh, mosque, to my knowledge, in the world that has uh, had the courage to uh, show their support for the LGBTQ community with the flag. Now, you want to say something about it? I just don't understand because um, the majority is not gay. Like, most of us are not gay. It's a minority. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why all these flags are coming up. I don't understand. Why? Like, why are they doing it? Like, well, all these... Well, I mean, we have... Why a, is all this... It's like the dictatorship of the minority. It's 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 kind but of... But they are... I mean, I don't have anything against gay people at all. I really don't. I love everyone. But I don't understand because um, they're a minority and it's always in our face. Like, every, we just went through the well, last we, month. Well, we, we hope that it stays to the month of June. They have taken over. It was one day, now they have taken over the, 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 the whole month. I hope it stays to the month of June because, I mean, at that point, we will need an heterosexual uh, month uh, in which we go all around with our families and show that we are prou proud of being homosexual. Uh, sorry, say, not homosexual, <laughs> but we're heterosexual. Heterosexual. So I mean, it's it's kind of like incredible, though, that uh, uh, 
uh, this is happening. There is a conspiracy richly against the heterosexual community and more and more. Uh, it's, it's obvious. Uh, I don't want to seem like uh, my friend Harry Markov that at times is a little bit too extreme on certain positions, but uh, it seems like... Uh, um, it's just not balanced. Everything yes. should be balanced. You know, that's the way things should be, and it's mm. not balanced. Mm, mm, mm. So we all feel like weird. Uh, yes, I, I guess so that there needs to be a little bit more uh, balance. But, you know, we are in a liberal world order, after all, like the, the, the one of the guys from the Joe Biden administration has said. So in this liberal world order, you are forced, basically, to support uh, all these weird things. I mean, uh, we just talked about uh, Elon Musk's son who wants distance from his father and from uh, now he wants to become a woman uh, called, called Vivian and I don't know, I mean, it's, just, it's just crazy. My sister was telling me the story yes. that she knew when she was younger, she knew when she used to go to clubs, she knew this transvestite. Mm -hmm. and. Um, um, you know, she, the transvet, he, she, she called him Shim. Um, he had a sex change and everything. And then, mm -hmm. um, afterwards, like many, many years after he regretted it, he regretted it mm -hmm. and he became, he, she, he, be, he became a she, but then regretted it and then became a lesbian after that because he who became a she realized that. He still liked women, and so, you know, he didn't want to go with men. Yeah, at that point, he became a thresbian. Then he had, like, no anything. Yeah, like that's what that's what they anything. call them, thresbians, I think they're called. Thresbian. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's because then they realize that they're, how they become. Uh, <laughs> Jeez, man. Okay, this is the liberal world order of Joe Biden. World order started trending after White House director of the National Economic Council said this on CNN. Or to pay four eighty-five a gallon for months, if not years, this is just not sustainable. Well, what you heard from the president today was a clear articulation of the stakes. This is about the future of the liberal world order, and we have to stand firm. But at this Brian, that gets to your yeah. point. Right. Well, he, he, this this right that that this 40% increase or whatever it is at this point is about beating Russia, is about, and what he means is liberal democracies, that this yeah. is, these are liberal democracies. Now, what, the, what it means uh, that uh, we all need, I mean, liberal world order means that at that point, there is only one ideology, and it's the progressive ideology of these woke idiots from Washington, including, of course, uh, one of their, biggest representatives and biggest idiots. I'm talking, of course, about uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez because, uh, I mean, she's, 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 she's out of it. I mean, she's completely out of it. She accuses the Supreme Court of a coup because for it to be done away with. I mean, she doesn't even understand the, 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 the importance of the Supreme Court as uh, one of the branches that guarantees really uh, the uh, rights of all people here in the United States of America. I think what we need to do is show the American people that when they give the Democratic pa uh, Party power and when they actually do vote for us, that we will be using and we are willing to use the power that they do give us um, in order to merit increased expansions in our majority. So in terms of what I think the, uh, the, the, presidential administra the president's administration should be able to do, uh, we have many ideas we have um some ideas coming from senator warren i don't care about your ideas i don't care about your liberal world dude i'm not gonna sacrifice my health uh, my way of life because i have to pay for some war with some mafiosi zelensky and a bunch of idiots in ukraine or uh, because then they can have their uh, uh, lgbtq whatever gay prides and whatnot i don't care you can finance it yourself with your own money. You can you can create your own reality. You can't infringe upon my reality. The problem here is that they are increasing infringing upon our reality. And it becomes a problem. Because even if I loved and I 
was brought up amongst the gay community because uh, of my family and my grandmother being a big icon amongst the gay community, it becomes really difficult for me to understand what uh, is next here. What is next here? Are they basically saying to us uh, that uh, heterosexual sex is wrong? Is wrong to be together between a man and a woman? In a hundred years from now, are we gonna see the heterosexual community persecuted as a, some kind of dangerous minority? I mean, guys, the numbers are growing in the millennials. The percentage of homosexuals have grown up to 30%. So just make your math, just calculate in 100 years from now, how many heterosexuals will be left? I don't think there's going to be a plan. The, the thing is that in the end, their plan is uh, very obvious, and I described it in my books. They want to push us uh, to, uh, to distance ourselves from procreation. Procreation is something that you go and buy in a supermarket or in a shop. I want that kid, I want that dog, I want that rabbit, I want that. That's the thing. And why they want abortion? So the women can continue working in any natural way. They offer you money, go and abort. You have to work in this company. That is what they're doing here. They are pushing, of course, abortion because they need them at their job place. Hey, slave. Amazon. <laughs> hey, slave, just continue doing your job and, and we will pay for your abortion. And sad to see, though, that this is really and all those companies that were today. supporting it like yeah you know we saw all those companies that are supporting all yeah. the ones that we watch on tv all the whatever somebody says a lot of what has to do with what they put in our food and water but and they use television to work absolutely we know that and in fact that is one of the themes also of my next book um, the Leo Zagami show continues here eight minutes past the hour wherever you are around the world remember we have also that moment uh, that usually makes Christy very happy which is of course uh, uh, when I open the phone lines <laughs> the phone lines um, okay so uh, we have more news here in particular, I found something that I'm investigating. I might have more images from this satanic ritual that has surfaced on the internet uh, from Barcelona in Spain. I don't know if you heard about it. Uh, I am uh, just going to show you some of this material. It's just a little brief trailer of it. Um, working on getting more of uh, uh, more material on. Uh, what is basically an exposure work uh, on uh, Satanism uh, these days uh, around the world, in particular, in this case, in Spain. Check this out. Our production team received a most wanted notification thanks to informants. Two days later, on the outskirts of Barcelona, a secret sect would be conducting a satanic initiation ritual they could film the ceremony without the satanics being aware. Of course, we were warned of the danger that this endeavor could represent. This sect can be dangerous if they are unmasked, even more if they are fified. Anonymity is their main weapon in order to carry out their activities. On the indicated day, four team members arrived at the scene three hours prior to the event. They checked the place and verified that it was an abandoned hermitage. Those signs revealed it was a place where satanic practices were frequent. Later, they admitted that in spite of being professionals who are used to similar situations, this place disturbed them. They placed two small hidden cameras, which due to the circumstances would technically limit the possibility to achieve high quality footage. What you are about to watch are unique images. 
Like in all initiation rituals, the novice must comply with all requirements in order to descend to hell. Okay, so the, uh, the images are, of course, uh, not there yet. <laughs> we are trying to get them so we can maybe transmit them to you and show you what's going on in this uh, satanic initiation. However, it's definitely uh, showing what's happening in this day and age where Satanism is growing, is increasing in our society. Uh, especially in countries that are actually Catholic, like uh, Spain, for example. Catholic because then they are Catholic, uh, like Alexander Ocasio-Cortez, who writes for the Jesuit America, but then wants abortion, who is a Catholic in name only, like most Catholics these days. A letter along with 25 other uh, Democratic senators asking President Biden to explore uh, opening health care clinics on federal lands in red states uh, in order to help people access the health care and abortion services that they need. We also must, and uh, President Biden did indicate that he was going to start looking into expanding uh, abortion access via the pill, as well as educational efforts. Uh, henceforth. But also what we, what I believe that the president and the Democratic Party needs to come to terms with is that this is not just a crisis of Roe. Mm -hmm. This is a crisis of our democracy. The Supreme Court has dramatically overreached its authority. We had two conservative senators in the United States Senate, Senator Manchin yeah. and Senator Collins, come out with a very explosive allegation that these that several Supreme Court justices misled them in their during their confirmation hearings and in the lead up to their confirmation. This is a crisis of legitimacy. A crisis of legitimacy. Ooh. Well, I mean, we are definitely in a crisis uh, of sorts uh, with this uh, liberal world order of theirs. Ah. ...who are facing off against authoritarianism in a struggle for the future. And that if you want to win that struggle, then yeah, it's going to cost, uh, you know, and you're going to sanction a giant oil producing state. Well, who cares about sanctioning what? Uh, the, the, the thing is that America is looking more and more Soviet these days. Russia is looking more and more like America, maybe used to be with some serious leadership that here is missing, because we don't have a real leadership here in, 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 at, at the moment uh, here in the United States of America. It's pretty clear. And uh, uh, America is increasingly becoming communist. People like Alexander Ocasio-Cortez are, uh, they could have been hanging out with Vladimir Lenin a hundred years ago. Um, so what are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? Now, um, I have, of course, other news that I would like to relate to you before we start with uh, uh, the uh, phone calls. So one article caught my attention on the New York Post, and it's uh, something I wanted to ask Christy her opinion. Uh, the inventor of mobile phone just uh, said, uh, put down your devices and get a life. Oh, that's good. Uh, it's, it's like, you know, I mean, the guy who actually invented the mobile phone uh, he, he is encouraging people, he's uh, 92 years old, and he's encouraging, he invented the famous Motorola back in the early 70s, and uh, he's just saying, uh, here he is, <laughs> mythical Motorola, uh, get alive. What's uh, your take on that, Christine? I think he's right, and I think I need to listen to him, because <laughs> I use my... I have, I, it's hooked to the Wi-Fi and I use it. Mm. You don't even use yours ever except to talk on it, but I use mine. And I really have been thinking about not using it anymore, like taking some of those apps off. Absolutely. because Like I walk around, I do my walk and I do it's, my it's, steps every day and it's on this tracker on my phone that yeah. tracks my steps to see how many steps I do. 
and I don't want to do that. <laughs> Guys, it's it's incredible, you know. I mean, you, you have to understand the people, for example, then, but why don't you spend more time on this or this other social network, Telegram, or uh, why don't you come on Signal? Why don't you come here? Why don't you come there? Why don't you come on TikTok? Why don't you... Guys, you don't get it. I don't want to be on those uh, apps because they are apps. My phone doesn't have these apps. Uh, I actually you go are on them, though. Well, I go on <laughs> Facebook with my computer. I don't yeah. have the app. And uh, I despise using a uh, smartphone all the time. I prefer watching people in their eyes rather than watching my phone all the time. And I prefer living in the real world, uh, just like the elite. The elite will be living in the real world in the next few years, guys. You might be lost in a mobile phone takeover of your body, like the Nokia CEO said, within the next few years, the phone will be integrated in your body. You might be lost with augmented reality or virtual reality surrounding you. But the elite will be enjoying life in the real world, while you will be enjoying life in the fictional world. That would be the difference in 10 years from now. The average folk will be condemned in a spiritual cage. Do you prefer that? I don't think so. Um, so, I mean, I've been one of the first people to have a mobile phone. I actually had the Motorola back at the end of the 80s because of my job uh, as, a, as a DJ, I started uh, very early uh, working and uh, going around with a mobile phone was very important, especially when you were going into some illegal rave or some illegal party of some kind. Of, uh, you you had to be driven, no? And so I was going always around. So for me, the mobile phone was a great thing. And I tell you, my bills, man, were like... Did you have a pager? Yeah, well, no, I had to pay them, but it was crazy. I a mean, pager. Remember the pagers? Huh? Those are for children. Oh, no, pager, <laughs> no, pager was like something I didn't want. And never really took off the pager thing in Italy. So, no, no, no. Uh, the, the mobile phone, uh, I mean, it, it was a great thing because you could connect, you could go around, connect, uh, live in place. But nowadays, it's not about that. It's about literally invading your mental space, uh, algorithms that are very complex. This device, the phone, is basically a way for the artificial intelligence to build the profile they have of you. So you, you, the less info you give them, the less you are on it, the less the AI will be able to understand you. They must think I'm a troublemaker. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I had that big Motorola. It was so big, that big Motorola, like the, the, the guy he had. The, I had that one. It was I black. saw it. Yeah, yeah, I still have it at home. Yeah, yeah. I saw it. It's like a piece of uh, memory, you know. Yes, yeah. My it's mother's a historic said, piece of yeah, the maybe, maybe museum. Should, yeah, maybe you should sell an eBay. Um, <laughs> but it was so big that uh, once I was attacked by a Doberman. Doberman is a fierce dog, man. I mean, you don't want to be attacked by a Doberman. They can kill you in a, in a spot. I don't know if you ever saw those German Dobermans. Yeah. And I was in a rave. This Doberman kind of assaulted me out of nowhere. I, boom, slashed him on the head with that. And that was it. I mean, you have to react. I mean, of course, I love dogs. I love my Rambo. But if you want to, if you want to kill me, then I, it's either me or the what, dog. What, did you throw your phone at it? I had to. And then what happened in the phone? No, I didn't throw the phone. I used it as a... Um... No, what happened to the dog? Well, he, he backed off, fortunately. Really? <laughs> yeah, he kind of got scared. <laughs> he probably didn't think... Uh... Yeah, that would big folds, you know. If you get it on your head or you get it on your body, you get it hurt, you know? I mean, you don't want to hurt the dog, but the dog was hurting me. So, I mean, I had to... And so that, that was it. But So it had to kind of like a double function. You know? And then with the batteries kind of got smaller, but the bigger battery then at that point, uh, it, it was very handy to have uh, that uh, that phone for a number of reasons. I'm not going to go into the details. <laughs> but, huh? 
Yeah, because you could uh, hide things in a double way inside it. Uh, in the oh, thing. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. If you have a joint or something. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nothing incredible. I'm mean, not talking about, I don't know what. <laughs> but all nostalgia, definitely, showing your age, <laughs> somebody says. <laughs> okay, okay. So, um, more information comes from uh, the, the, the the airports web. There is literally yeah. Air Armageddon, Armageddon. not Armageddon, but Armageddon. My sister uh, is going on the plane. I think she's going today. Oh God, that's she's gonna flying, be really difficult. She's uh, flying to Arizona, but I don't think I heard that it's on the East Coast, but we don't know. Fourth circle of hell, they call it. Over six thousand late flights delay Independence Day travelers. Did you guys know that they offered ten thousand dollars? I don't know if I think it was yeah, on the Delta flight. Yeah, I'm was, not sure, but they offered ten thousand dollars. Minnesota or something. I don't know. Somebody, yeah. somebody must to get off the plane because they were overbooked. I would have totally taken it. Mm. Yeah. I was it. Yeah. He, him too. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they give each person? So like, if we both did, uh, I don't know. I, don't, I would have uh, taken it. Uh, definitely <laughs> interesting. Uh, as interesting is the new dollars. <laughs> guys, the new friends, the new friends, the new trend, the new ultra contagious trend. Uh, guys, somebody BA four, BA five, works in California. Uh, blah blah blah. blah. I hope they don't start again with their lockdown BS and all the oh, BS. Oh, especially in the summer. Especially here in California, where they no. are extremely lived up. It was so hard to wear that mask. The other in the day, summer. the other day, it was 115. I was downtown Palm Spring around maybe what was lunchtime when I went the other mm -hmm. day. There were people in their car wearing a mask. There were people in the street wearing a mask. Now, what kind of sickness do these people have in their head? Still, I don't understand. It's very difficult to understand yes, at times. Because, I mean, of course, you can you can say there is a use for it uh, in uh, in certain places if you want to follow that, no, that indication. But literally under the sun, and I'm talking about very powerful sun. I mean, it's just like, huh? Yeah, I don't think anything can survive. Under the antenna, you wearing that on top, you are asking, uh, basically, you, I'm watching saying, but are they going to collapse soon? Are they going to die in front of me? I, mean, it's, I was hardly able to breathe without. Let alone it. But let's see what's going to happen in the coming uh, months. Uh, I'm sure uh, they will be pushing again for some kind of... Uh, Do you think that they're going to try to lock this down before the big election? That is a, it's a possibility that some people have been talking about. In the meantime, guys, China, 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 uh, Xi Jinping went to Hong Kong said, we brought you democracy 25 years ago. We brought you democracy? I mean, this guy is, of course deluding himself and the people that still believe uh, in China. China is, of course, doesn't have nothing to do with a democracy. It's a communist dictatorship. But it was incredible that they could actually, you know, he could actually say that blatantly. We brought you democracy 25 years ago. I can understand that, of course, there was a colonial power in charge there. It was Great Britain. There was a passing of that, you know, Hong Kong had been for over 100 years in the hands of... Uh, of the United Kingdom, and uh, I understand the Chinese uh, have more in common though, with the people from Hong Kong, probably. But the people from Hong Kong have realized that that two systems uh, promised uh, at the beginning of uh, this uh, of this China takeover of Hong Kong never really happened. In the end, uh, now we have one system, and it's obey the Communist Party of you will uh, be probably arrested, uh, tortured, or killed. Um, but China has big problems. China has big problems. China has big problems with uh, the virus reappearing in Wuhan now, which seems to be kind of incredible. But also China is on track for contagious economic crash. We have heard for months about uh, uh, the real estate uh, problems in China. 
China on track for contagious crash within weeks, threat of deflation for whole world. So not only we have the, the oil, the gas problem with Russia, the, 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 the grains, the flour, the, the, um, the other stuff you need, the fertilizers, uh, the food is growing up in price in the shops. Uh, we can This is only the beginning. With the Chinese crash, this inflation in the whole world could get out of control to a level unseen. It says here, Chinese economy to spew deflation over world. So already the world is deflating already. It's already we, we are having already problems of inflation. What does this mean? Author and capital research co-founder Anne Stevenson Young has warned the world to brace for deflation as China's economy is about to crash. As Xi Jinping, communist regime is still pushing for a zero COVID policy and inflation gallops around the world, China has seen its exports crumble, driving good pri goods prices down. After two years of rapid economic growth in 2020-2021, China exports market is experiencing a dangerous decline. Well, this is, uh, guys, uh, China in the meantime, though, it's probably working on the dark side of the moon. And I'm not saying that, just uh, saying because there is uh, some very suspicious activities uh, going on uh, at the moment in the moon. And not only suspicious activity, I mean, I'm going to show you what has happened with this... Uh, Double crater created by a missile that probably landed on the moon. But no people, right? Well, people we don't, don't land on the moon. Well, at the moment, we don't know. I mean, the Chinese are never going to tell us if they land on the moon. Uh, well, okay, but, but <laughs> no, but okay, you see that image that you can see here. Now, the lunar reconnaissance orbiter that NASA has, has spotted this, and it's not a singular hole, but a double hole, uh, meaning uh, that this is uh, some kind of, uh, uh, the double crater uh, was unexpected. It may, it may indicate that the rocket body had large masses at each end. Typically, a spent rocket has mass concentrated uh, uh, at the motor, and the rest of the rocket stage mainly consists of an empty fuel tank. Since uh, the origin of the rocket body remains uncertain, the double nature of the crater may indicate its identity. And now let's go to another article, though, that I found today, which might indicate who is the owner of uh, that uh, missile that landed on the moon. Uh, while America is, of course, trying to survive, uh, China is plotting, it's plotting behind the scenes, and if Russia is saying it, it means it's true. Huh? Okay, China may be plotting moon takeover, NASA. Uh, Chinese astronauts are busy learning how to destroy other nations' satellites, agency chief Bill Nelson claims. So they want to take over the skies, they want to take over the space, they want to take over the moon as part of their military space program. He emphasized that, emphasized that in 2035, Beijing might finish construction of his own moon station and start experiments a year later. So, despite Beijing's assurances that this ambitious space program has purely peaceful purposes, Nelson has long been a thought critic of Chinese uh, policy in space. That's why the fact that there was a very suspicious uh, a missile, uh, it, 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 it kind of like, it seems pretty obvious that maybe China is in some way involved, you know? US Today has also talked about it a few days ago. Here we have the, here is the uh, NASA baffled, uh, it says NASA. But NASA probably knows very well is the Chinese, they just can't say it. Uh, because are you gonna show, uh, I mean, how are you gonna pick up evidence uh, in, in space? NASA baffled by mystery rocket body that crashed into the moon. So NASA is basically uh, not uh, sure of what this uh, rocket is. And 
we we hope to know more about all this in the coming days or weeks space wars coming up space was star wars space wars it reminds me of a text that was written a few decades ago by michael aquino uh -oh. i think it was called uh, space wars if i don't get it wrong yeah. let me see huh? Nice words, let me see. Michael Aquino, of course, knew a lot uh, about psychological warfare, and uh, he, he kind of like uh, he published also that mind war uh, paper, and uh, he was also very much into the the psychology of uh, of the space wars. Let's say. This is the Leo Zagami show. 31 minutes past the hour. As you know, this is the time. Uh, Christy, of course, uh, enjoys more than any other time in the show. Yes. <laughs> it is, uh, of course, the time in which we open the phone lines. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to open the phone lines of the Leo Zagami show. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, um, working on the technical aspects of opening the, the phone line. I'm going to tell you when they're open. We never uh, know if anybody's going to call. <laughs> what? We never know if anybody is going to call. I know. <laughs> well, but then people always call. People call. People call. I mean, uh, it's only once a week right now. It's only once a week. It's only once a week. So people should call at least once a week when we're on. And say hello. Hello there. Hello Hi. there. OK. Somebody says the earth is flat. Uh, well, maybe you can join uh, the Vatican uh, against Galileo Galilei 500 years ago. That's it. Uh, the Vatican was a staunch proposer of the flat earth. That's why we don't like them. <laughs> we are not flat earthers here. Uh, sorry, Jose. <laughs> OK. This is the phone line. The phone line is open. If plus you one. Believe that, it's okay. Well, it's okay. You can believe whatever <laughs> you want. I mean, you can believe in Father Christmas. You can believe uh, in, in the, the Easter Bunny. You can believe in other things. Plus one nine seven zero five seven seven six three six nine. This is the phone line. Casey, very elegant today. Very beautiful. Who's um... calling? <laughs> Welcome to the Leo Zagami Show. Who am I talking with? Hi, it's Rob from Vision 3 again. Hi, Rob. Uh, hi, Rob. Uh, so what do you think uh, of uh, the title of the show today and what we have shown? I mean, the testimony, uh, aside from, uh, uh, of course, the father of Angelina Jolie, but also the testimony of that soldier of 100 years old about the present state of America. What do you think? I, I was calling about the later topic about the moon aspect, but ah, just okay. refresh my memory that that. Uh, of uh, information there about the 100 year old i could see that but i was just walking in ah okay so you you tuned in a little bit later no problem uh, let's discuss uh, then uh, other things that you have used during the course of the show since you tuned in yeah so you you talked about this uh two-part uh missile crash and bring to mind uh, arthur c clark and uh space 2001 and 2010 and buzz aldrin the astronaut who on the Mike Douglas show referred to a monument or monolith on one of the moons of Mars and when we were going to disclose that. And that got quickly kind of uh, mind erased from the public space. And Buzz Aldrin was kind of uh, fell off the face of the earth in terms of media appearances. So it seems that there's definitely this, this parallel breakaway uh, technological elite that is exploring space and then giving us you know, we've never been back to the moon in what 40 years now so i call a big fat bs there so it's just common sense to know that we're we're doing stuff up there but they don't like to uh, disclose that it's like a two two-tiered society where we're just kept stupid and dumb but you know willingly paying every day most of our earnings to this the system so yeah, very very well uh, said i mean yeah i, I completely agree there is uh, Definitely a very strange thing going on regarding the fact that we went to the moon so long ago and now we seemingly don't have the technology to go back to it or we have to wait and postpone and postpone every time 
NASA announces uh, or some president announces maybe future explorations of the moon, they regularly get participated. Uh, it's, it's, it's possible definitely that uh, there is something going on that we don't know about also regarding Mars. Uh, and, and Mars is the place where Elon Musk wants to bring his empire. Maybe he can also bring the Pope with him and we can get rid of them. Um, <laughs> so what do you think? The, 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 there is something uh, also with China because it seems like China is really aggressive in their space program. Oh, you know, Bill Clinton gave China all the technology for our gyros. You know, that wasn't long ago. Uh, so all of this high tech, you know, and gyroscopes are vitally important for telemetry and steering of satellites. The gyros are, you know, give them their spatial accuracy of what they're doing, what they're maneuvering, and uh, pointing and steering. So uh, now there are electronic apertures for for uh, communications that don't need that so much, but. My point is, is that we gave them, we've been giving them the tech all along. So this synthesis that, you know, and the scuttling of the of the shipments to Chiang Kai-shek back in the day, you know. So China's a creation of the Western uh, hegemony, I'm going to call it that. Not well, that, I mean, but... uh, of course, Mao Zedong could have not come to power without the help of the United States uh, on his uh, long road to to unite China under the communist rule, unfortunately. And then uh, another uh, creation was uh, with uh, uh, Taiwan, uh, no? Shanghai Shek's uh, creation, then they came, uh, uh, let's say, uh, splitted. And, uh, and, and then they took their own course. Taiwan simply came to fruition because at that time, USA said, we want to give this uh, uh, this island a different system and you can't threaten them because we have nukes at that time america didn't have uh, sorry china didn't have nukes and so they just had to uh, succumb now things have changed so we we think that realistically china is also thinking of probably invading taiwan uh, in the fall or maybe in the coming years uh, how realistic you think is that uh, i think if uh, well, here's how I look at this. So every entity, meaning the West, U.S., the Europeans, whether it's Britain, or France, or Germany, and then the, the Asian spheres, they're each managing their populace uh, psychologically. So the the enemy has to be there to point at so that the government in question gets the political fuel and will of the people to honor its decisions. So China's in a as I see it, a fairly steep uh, curve down from the zenith of their mercantilism. So they, they've got a, a very fine edge of, of, of uh, uh, risk there that they need to manage. So they're politically pointing at the West, right, as we're pointing to China, just like we're talking here, uh, about who's doing what, you know, the boogeyman over there, right? So they are... They have to demonize Taiwan, or at least create the the, the psychological enemy that there that is there. I don't know. If, I think they're going to do some. They're going to continue to do this posturing to maintain that political fuel and control for their society. That it's that that Taiwan's the problem, not not the government of China, right? So it's, it's being able to point that psychological enemy and redirect the angst of the populace. Well, uh, at the moment, uh, like I explained in my recent book, uh, we are moving toward the Sino-Russian New World Order, and uh, Putin was very clear about it. He even said it. Uh, it's not anymore a, an American-centric world order uh, that we're dealing with, and Russia and China have definitely an alliance that cannot be put into discussion. Uh, so right. it's... So, it's Yeah, so they're, they're all doing... Everyone's doing the same thing. Everyone's devolving from this globalism. I would consider this as a plan. So the globalism... The globalists probably knew that there would be a reversion, you know, a revulsion from going over the top, full-on global government. So now they're going to devolve back to this, what I would call sector-based uh, nation... I'm going to call it continental government style, like we've got... You know, it's been in the corporate literature forever, APAC, EMEA, you know, uh, Americas, 
you know, it's already sitting there in the corporate structures for those listening. They just need to look and see that these nomenclatures are already being used and have been used. And I think that it goes back to the sectors, global sectors. So the Americas would be a sector, Europe and APAC would be a sector, you know, AFRICOM. We, all these structures are sitting there in our, our nomenclature in business. So they want to carve together in Asia. I mean, you've got that um, uh, Astana there in Kazakhstan. You know, that, go look at that Masonic city. That, that's, that's the well, continental uh, center, uh, the geodetic center of I want Asia. to ask you, I want to ask you, Sophie, did you read my latest book? Volume seven. Yeah, I've got it. Yeah, uh, so, and so I, I talk there, about I uh, Kazakhstan there, about uh, Astana now, Nur Sultan. Uh, I've been kind of very uh, detailed about describing uh, what that country is all about. Definitely, the yeah. weird thing is that. Uh, uh, at the moment, even if uh, we are sanctioning, for example, uh, Belarus or other countries connected with Russia, we are not sanctioning Kazakhstan, uh, which, uh, by the way, has also a very large uh, mining uh, crypto operation, as you know. Yeah. So it's sitting there in plain view what, what the genesis of this eventuality is that their boogeyman of the China uh, Russia merger or whatever you want to call that. Uh, it, it's a, they're, they're managing clay trading blocks on a sector level scale and they want to get those together. And this is all towards the grand design of a global government, right? So they have to do this global sector wide initial uh, formation first. So this is a long, long plan. They're in no great hurry. Uh, they're managing our psychology. Um, so uh, that's what's primary. And then the COVID thing is a psychological warfare. Well, uh, of course, of course. Yeah. Uh, but uh, they are definitely also crushing all the economies. And that's, uh, aside from exactly. being a psychologic, is also effective in the sense yeah, yeah, that yeah. you go well, to the show. The manipulation, right? So it's like we're going it, to, it's not a, a cold war, right? <laughs> Economic is a cold war. So yeah, but I think that uh, while here we might be subject to a cold war, unfortunately in Europe we will gradually find out exactly. that Where it is a, a, a battleground. Yeah, yes. Back to the, the cold war in Europe. So um, I, could, I think is. that Europe, though, is kind of dangerously warming up this war to become a proper war. I mean, uh, a clash like uh, the one in uh, yeah. Ukraine uh, wasn't really, uh, it never really happened during the Cold War, and it's uh, dangerously close to uh, bring also other countries in. Uh, so I think uh, that we can say that uh, Europe uh, is going to have some very serious problems. And uh, the fact that uh, now, just yesterday, Gazprom has announced so there's not going to be any gas supplies coming into Europe. So they are completely cutting off the gas. They say for working on the North Stream, whatever. But uh, it's, it's something that is going to basically uh, carry on for uh, for at least uh, ten days or more. Uh, and, and and we don't know if uh, they're going to then put uh, back uh, into circulation this gas. That means uh, literally putting the Germans in a very difficult place because the Germans who live in a very cold country are going to risk freezing to death. And a lot of other people in Europe are going to risk freezing to death this uh, coming right, fall. Like 1930, you know, just before World yeah. War II, and actually World War One was a shadow of the same thing, is this, it, it gets to a point where the citizenry rebels because of basic needs not being met, like you say, heating, food, and so on. So I see where they're just kind of, this is World War Three, and a lot of, you know, Peter Zion talks about World War Three. Well, well, this is starts with a psychological deprivation, and then it goes into a kinetic war, right? And then people enlist because they feel like the enemy did this to them, right? Because someone did it to them, and then they willingly enlist. So the draft's probably going to come back. And, you know, that's, this is the way it's going to go. It's just a, it's a broken record. One it's thing, though, one here. thing, one thing that, uh, you know, they are very interesting in protecting is uh, the, uh, the, the Ukraine uh, identity. And now, uh, apparently, the famous Borsch that it is uh, also partly an Ukrainian uh, dish 
has been declared a, 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 an important uh, uh, treasure from uh, uh, UNESCO, which is, of course, uh, another globalist uh, uh, entity. And uh, they have even uh, uh, given this official recognition that Borsch is Ukrainian. Now, let's remind all people that Ukraine didn't exist really as an entity until uh, uh, not so long ago, it was part of the Soviet Union, and even within the Soviet Union, it was simply uh, given that identity, but it wasn't a real country until, of course, then George Soros came into the equation uh, and at the fall of the Soviet Union planted his seeds, convincing people that not only they were Ukrainians, but also they had to be anti-Russian. So I guess that uh, uh, this... Uh, uh, moment uh, of uh, borscht, which is a traditional dish that I like very much. Uh, yeah, you, you tried it, I think, uh, once. Uh, my mother made it. Uh, no, like, you know, for I me, had you know. it in, in Estonia. Ah, in Estonia, yes, uh -huh. you had it with me in Estonia. Yes, 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 never yes. made it. She doesn't make Russian food. No, she makes borscht, though. I, I used to, yeah, 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 I used to, I, 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 I convinced her in experimenting with it, and she actually does it quite well. <laughs> Um, so thank you very much for calling. Uh, yeah, and uh, there's a there's a book out there called The Thirteen Tribe that talks about that the same area here. It focuses on that area from a, from the the Thirteenth Tribe, the Lost Tribe, uh, as possible roots of those people, and it goes back to the Scythians and the whole thing. It's just very very interesting that this is that this, the world attention is on this, at least from a Western perspective, in this particular area. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, let's give, uh, of course, other uh, viewers uh, the possibility of calling in. Uh, you have uh, the phone uh, on the screen, the phone number, plus one, nine seven zero five seven seven six three six nine. We still have 30 minutes left. Uh, please call as soon as possible in case uh, you want to uh, give uh, me or Christy um, a question or two. Huh? Mm -hmm. hmm? <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, here we have immediately another viewer. Uh, welcome to the Leo Zagami Show. Where are you calling from and what's your name? Hi, I'm calling from Chicago. My name is Rose. Hi, Rose. Hi, Rose. Hi, welcome Hi. to the Hi, Leo Hi, how are you? Good. Listen, I'll keep it short. I just want to know. Several months ago, on one of your shows, you talked about Rambo and his interesting history. Oh, Are yes. you ever going to do a segment on one of your books for Rambo? Uh, have I ever? What, sorry? I'm sorry. You spoke about Rambo, your dog. Yes. And his history. You said he had a very interesting history. Yes, so we actually... We actually no, we finish it. Okay. No, yes, we did actually dedicate... Uh, a Christmas uh, uh, tale to Rambo, uh, and gave uh, the and we gave. I think it was a couple of years ago. Yeah. Uh, probably oh. you missed well, it we, because we... uh, some of our channels, as you know, have been removed, and at times material gets just lost. You know, but oh, okay, I never saw that. Oh, okay. All right, because I was just wondering because I know he's getting old, and I thought maybe you might do like a final show on him or something. What? He's young. I mean, he's going to be around a long time. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's no final show. So. I know. I know. What kind I know. Of but I, thought is that? Yeah, you know, I didn't see that Christmas show. Okay. All right, then. It's probably gone. Maybe you could do an update of this. So we oh, well, uh, definitely. It's, uh, it's, it's actually, uh, it was a fairy tale which I had written mm -hmm. uh, a long time ago. Then we translated, I think, in English, and I delivered it uh, a couple of Christmases ago. Mm -hmm. uh, we might do that. But that was uh, just your show that you did. Okay, good. Yes, yes. Okay, we, yeah. All right. Definitely, we will, we will, uh, we will be doing it again. Uh, Rambo has a very interesting story, so I guess that people need to hear it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to be around a yeah, long yeah, time. Yeah, so. for people like us who missed it, you know, because like I just started watching your channel about a year ago. Ah, okay, okay. So you, you are not have been so, on board yeah, uh, for so. that long. Well, no worries then. Thank you for calling, okay. and uh, of course uh, we have still ten minutes, guys. If you want to call us. Uh, uh, we have, of course, the phone lines open for another 10 minutes, plus one, 970-577-6369.
this is the Leo Zagam show with Leo and Christian Rambo soon who's gonna join us at the end of the show. You know, I'm just like really testy about that lately because um, hmm. like everybody keeps bringing up Rambo's age to me and you know, I'm just like, I want him to be around as long as, I mean, I don't think that caller had anything to do with it. I think that she was just trying to bring up yeah, no, I mean, she didn't that know. old story, but then, you know, I'm like, really, because today when I brought him out, this woman, like, I see her all the time, and she's got a young dog, and she has to ask me every time she sees me how old Rambo is. And, okay, he's 14 years old. And um, young. I mean, she has to, to I just, 11. I mean, yeah. So, you know, I want Rambo to be here with us for as long as possible. So I just don't think about age with myself yes, yes, or with yeah. Rambo. So. Uh, Definitely, I want to. Hello, hello there. Welcome to the Leo Zagami Show. What's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Cecilia, and I live in Walnut, California. Hi. And I know where you're at because you're over there in Palm Springs. Yeah. <laughs> we are uh, both in the heat, I guess. Uh, how how hot is it where oh, you we're are? In the heat, but we're glad you're here, Leo, and your lovely wife, Christina, and we really appreciate all of the sacrifice and risks that you take Thank to you. expose the Illuminati. It's the very first time I've ever, ever called in anywhere. Uh, oh, wow. I'm a red-tailed individual, and I have such respect for you, both of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, so uh, what do you think of the subject of today, America, the state of America, the fact that we are constantly reminded every day that uh, we are becoming uh, more and more a divided nation. Uh, you, of course, yes, are also know, living here in California. When you were talking just a minute ago, I'm cleaning my kitchen right now. Ah, okay. I was thinking of the fact that really all of the factions are the same. They're all satanic. So you've got the satanic people running China. They've got, even though we like Putin's moves, you know somebody's got him good that controlling you. Everything is being controlled by Satan. Mm, yeah. So we are now under full Satanic control in the United States of America. Yeah, and there is also a lot of confusion. All these lines are flagged upside down, you know what I mean? And there is a lot of different information, like we had the caller uh, before that was talking about a book that I think mentioned, for example, the Khazars. We know that, uh, I mean, at least in my book, I have debunked uh, in my book so that, uh, that theory because I uh, talk about the Sabbatian Frankist all the time as being... Uh, oh, yeah, so they're all talking about it now. So you got it all started. And I found you through uh, Alex Jones, but they're talking about it now. That McDuff lives, he talks about it. You've got Professor Hamamoto, who had beautiful Christie on. Yes. They're talking about the 17 Frankists. And me and my husband are talking about it because my last name is Frank. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. And do you have also Jewish blood, I guess? Say that again? You have also Jewish blood? Or... Uh... No, I don't think he does. I think he has Irish and uh, huh. I married into the Frank family. Okay. I think he's got Irish and German. Hmm. But hmm. the Frank and T, Frank and T is, we, we're, we're paying attention here because history is everything. Yes. This is all as a result of our history. We know from Joseph Farrell that the Nazis jumped in and started NASA. We know oh, well, definitely, artists. definitely. Yeah. And they came here to California and they not only uh, started uh, because, uh, I mean, here we had uh, uh, Jack Parsons, uh, the, 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 the Parsons, uh, what, what became really the basis for NASA was also very much yeah. entrenched with the occult because Jack Parsons was working with uh, with Alistair Crowley, with the OTO. Then we had all these Nazis oh, coming. Yeah. We have Von Braun and of course all the Nazis coming in. They brought their own uh, occult background because uh, uh, and actually, it's uh, Peter Lavenda, who is a great author, who makes some great points uh, regarding uh, also the possibility they brought uh, a satanic cult with them, not only the science of uh, their missiles uh, that were, by the way, it uh, was then uh, essential for, for America to be in the game, to have uh, 
these uh, scientists. Now America has some problems because just uh, the, I just uh, saw this morning or yesterday, I think uh, this news about uh, America failing the launch of an hypersonic missile. Now America failing the launch of an hypersonic missile, it's, it's sincerely very scandalous. So when we have uh, uh, Kim Jong-un in North Korea, which is a shit old state that doesn't even provide for food to its yeah. citizens, that manages to launch an hypersonic missile. We have Russia using them even in wars, in the war zone, because they actually abuse uh, an hypersonic, they test them during the war. We have China using hypersonic missiles. We have fallen behind now. We have fallen behind. So not only... Oh, way behind, but it's by design, Leo. Yeah, it's, it's by, by design, design, of course. Of course it's you by design. You have been so instrumental. It's so funny that I called in because I'm a house I've never... Uh, you know, I got a little small concrete cutting business I run over here in California, but the state's trying to kill us. But what I wanted to tell you <laughs> is that you have done such a great job about the Jesuits, because that's where it's at. Those yeah. Jesuits come over here, they've infiltrated everything. And you know, another thing that people don't talk about a lot of times, I think that the creation of Israel after World War II was a whole part of their design, because then they're running harder missiles and higher technology than we have, don't you think? What do you think about Israel? Well, uh, Barry Kamish, uh, who was uh, the late Barry Kamish, who wrote some uh, interesting uh, books and uh, articles, uh, he, he was very much into denouncing uh, the labor Zionists and Sabbatian Frankists, but also the Jesuits. He, he had uh, very much knowledge about also Jesuitry and uh, and he was of course living in israel so he was very much into understanding what's happening for example now in israel there is a power struggle uh, just as we talk uh, israel was put yes i was hoping you would say something about that tell me about that apparently their whole government is collapsed yeah, there is actually, uh, uh, the, the, the thing is that they want to, I think from what I understand, eh, because of course I'm not living in Israel, but from what I understand, there is uh, the problem of Netanyahu lurking around the corner for them. They want to avoid uh, having in every way possible Netanyahu. And at the same time, they are kind of have a new leader now that is showing up. I'm going to show him now on the screen. Uh, leader for Israel, as pointed out also here by CNN. Um, he, he is uh, basically uh, um, taking over the as caretaker prime minister. He is uh, at, at the moment, uh, Yar Lapid, that is his name. Uh, caretaker prime minister, though, doesn't sign, sound very, very good, <laughs> but uh, he's the son of a prominent wow. family. He says, uh, he says, he has, he has also, though, a past in acting, so a little bit like Zelensky. Uh, he has a past in music and screenwriting, even in amateur boxing, and he's a journalist turned politician. So, uh, I don't know, I mean, he seems to be a media celebrity, a centrist, probably. Uh, well, we can't he, trust him. We can't trust him, Yeah, I mean, he promised to. Trust he, like that to run all them. We gave all that high technology to them. He, yeah, you, know? you know what he's promising? He's promising to legalize same sex marriage, which I'm sure will make Harari very, very, uh, very happy. He's probably a Sabbatian Frankist. Uh, here we go with another call. Uh, welcome to the Leo Zagami Show. This is going to be. It's me. Okay, okay. Well, we are, we are about actually to close the show in one minute, so we will close it with your phone call. We, we thank you for calling. Well, I want to tell you both, you are the most beautiful people to me. I know you believe in Christ. I know you're sacrificing. I know a little bit about the kind of persecution you suffer, and we respect you. We respect uh, Alex Jones and everybody else putting their lives on the line out there to get this information out. God bless you. I'm, glad, I'm, I'm, you I'm very glad that we have people like you in California, and I hope uh, that in the next uh, few months, at one point, we will be able to organize some kind of event so we can get all our fans from Southern California in a room, and we can all meet in person. Thank you so much for calling. That sounds great. Thank, Thank you. you. God Bye -bye. bless you. God bless you. God bless all. Our Here's viewers today, the Medigo Rambo. <laughs> Rambo! He's going to live forever, I say. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs>
as long as I, I can manage to help him to live. Oh, no, he's passing out. Yeah, he's very energetic. <laughs> he acts <Yeah>. young. <laughs> <laughs> he actually does a lot. I mean, he eats really good food and he does PEMF therapy every day. Yeah. He, he has he, a mat he, and he sits on it every he, day. He, he, he actually does uh, a mat thanks to our uh, it was donated. Dear, uh, donated by one of uh, our supporters here, Bruce. Uh, who, who gave him this mat and he uses every day this mat and he loves the mat he'll, 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 he'll come to me like he eats and we go for a walk and he mm -hmm. eats and then he comes to me right after and i said what do you want to do the mat and he wants to jump on the bed and then he does it for an hour yeah he, he really is fixated it's yeah. supposed to help your body like it it, it, it helps your cells in your body to rejuvenate and yeah. he's been like a really a, he's you see how he is guys I and mean, he's so much of it so, Rambo, you better Rambo is my baby. Baby. baby i love him so much a baby so, <laughs> okay guys thank you so much for tuning in today we see you next week uh, keep on supporting the leo zagami show purchase also our books and God bless you. Have a great 4th of July. We will be doing we will be doing a small video on the 4th of July. And then we Happy will be, 4th of July we will and rest in peace, Dr. Z. Yeah, we, we, we will we be. We lost a great man. Well, Dr. Z. Ah, absolutely. Lost Zelenko, uh, who was, by the way, a Shabbat. He uh, was a Jewish Shabbat member. A great guy uh, who helped a lot of people with his... Uh, his work, uh, he will be missed. So, the 4th of July, guys. I Happy see a Marine in the chat. Semper Fi, my son. So. <laughs> <laughs> happy, happy 4th of Ju July. Timothy Alberino, yes. Uh, he gave me a shout at, the Ver at uh, Veritas Radio. He's a great guy also, Timothy. We did a video. We did an interview that's yes, going to air next week. Next week, so. next week we will have uh, also. Okay, I gotta let him <laughs> Take care, guys. Oh, Rambo! Rambo! Jesus, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. dancing around, <laughs> dancing around. Bye, everyone. See you next week. from Palm Springs, California. This was the Leo Zagami Show.